My name is Josh C. Pearson. Uh, there's a group of people downstairs in the foyer of Royal Festival Hall who are watching this on a big screen. So this is like uh, a show without an audience, except that there's 20 people on the boat here being really quiet, so it makes it even more awkward. Uh, what should we do here? I'll sit down. Okay, can y'all make a little noise? So it's like a, there we go, thanks. That's good, I feel better already. How's that? There we go, okay. There. How's my hair? Looking very handsome. Thank you, I've got my laptops ready. Okay, so this is a uh, Art Angel production. Uh, where they give artists, artistes, uh, a little opportunity to live in a boat for about 24 hours and come up with something. Most people play a show live from the boat on top of the uh, gallery here. And I decided instead of just doing that to uh, try to record as much as I could within 24 hours and broadcast it uh, live just for the idea of uh, well, the art of it and the pressure of it. We used to do this sort of thing uh, where I'm from in Denton, Texas. There's an art collective called the Good Bad Art Collective, uh, and uh, a guy named Chris, shoot, Chris something, whose name escapes me now, I was meant to, meant to Google it, but I forgot. Sorry, buddy, it was 20 years ago. Uh, he did a, a thing called a rock lottery. I give him full credit where he picked uh, five bands, and all those bands put their names in a hat, and then they had uh, 12 hours to write five songs and play it in front of their peers, which is a lot of pressure, a lot more pressure than... Uh, from the strangers. Anyway, that's fine and dandy, and normally the music always works out real well, but the lyrics tend to suffer. I can't uh, be, I can't be uh, promised to come up with lyrics that quick. So I decided to do cover songs and decided to do gospel cover songs for various reasons. I'm not exactly sure what they were, either because of Art Angel or some themes with the boat, Near My God to Thee, the Titanic, or uh, something. I'd wanted to do them for a while, and I was reading this passage in uh, Blood Meridian. I try to visit that book once every few years, and there's a beautiful passage where the scalp hunters are walking away from a man who's dying got in a shot with an arrow or some Indians and as they're riding off he's singing gospel songs of his youth with uh, determination and clarity and I really like that idea anywho we had about 10 hours to do it and I'm gonna play some some old-time gospel songs and play some beautiful YouTube clips by a couple that I discovered recently called uh, Country Gospel Music. I think we've got everything plugged in here that's going to work. Maybe. Then we'll Just a second, because we're, we're all in this together. If I make this small, as do they? Enjoy the beauty. What I want. Y'all bear with me. we got an hour, and I'm going to play maybe five to ten of the songs that I recorded. And uh, some of these beautiful clips. Country gospel s song. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Let's play Long Black Train. You guys want to hear Long Black Train or Who Will Pray For Me When Mama's Gone? I like this one. It's really sweet. If my mother's watching, I haven't talked to you in about four months. Hope you're well. Hope you're praying. And right now we got Tom and Debbie Tremble with their friend Butch Crawford on drums. We was down there and spent last weekend at their place, went to church with them where this was filmed. We filmed those guys, and Debbie and Tom sings a masterpiece here, right? It's a beautiful, it's beautiful a tear -jerker, song. It's actually, because the title of it is, Who Will Pray For Me When Mama... When Mama's Gone. When Mama's Gone. And boy, I tell you, boy, Mama sent them a lot of prayers for me, that's for sure. Well, you know, I'd want to dedicate this song to my mom because... <laughs> 
Who will pray for me when Mama's gone? So enjoy as they sing. Pretty good, huh? Who will pray for me when Mama's gone? I like that couple a lot. Okay, I'm gonna play one of my smash smash hits now. So what I've done here, I took a list of about 50 gospel songs and uh, whittled down 13, and then whittled back up to 26, and then whittled back down to 12. And uh, I'm not a very good whittler. I discovered that, and I also realized that I don't know these songs as well as I used used to, uh, within the, the last 12 hours, I realized that, unfortunately. Otherwise, they'd sound a lot better. So, um, they're divided into twos, couplets. Uh, I liked, I was calling them gospel death sentences and life sentences. So they said a little sentence. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. And uh, that's followed with an old song called At the Cross. And um, all, all of them are coupled like that. Because he lives, and it's coupled with I surrender all. So it reads, because he lives, I surrender all. Just a closer walk with thee in the garden, crying in the chapel softly and tenderly. In moments like these, I've decided to follow Jesus, that sort of stuff. And they're real precious to me because they're the songs that I grew up with. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't do them justice. I should have uh, practiced a bit more. But I, I didn't. I fell short. So which do you all want to hear? Do you want to hear uh, just a closer walk? Or, okay. Or a last. Do you want to hear them in order? Hmm. Hmm, hmm. This is a whole lot more pressure than uh, with in front of a crowd. I just want to let you know. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's like Russian roulette over here. Let's do I Surrender All instead. Okay, so they're going to pan with real pretty shots of the river. And I'm going to pre pretend to know, look like I know what I'm doing. Thank you all for coming. And if you're downstairs, stick around. We'll come by after oh, to hey. Jesus, I surrender. Oh, to thee, my 
You saw me crying in the dark. sell it to me for 40 pounds instead of 60. Those were friend prices. And if you meet him, he's near Oxford Circus and the tourist stops and ask him if you two can get a friend price. He, he didn't have a medium because I looked through all the things and then I, he, he ripped off one of the large tags and tried to talk to But I was too smart for that. So, a skeleton will appear in this and this hat and you'll sign your little name and put it into the hat and win one of these beautiful keepsakes. Oh, let me explain the boat. It's a boat that was fashioned after uh, uh, the Heart of Darkness. Joseph Conrad's uh, trip down the, down the line and it doesn't float. There's no DVD player, but it's still really cool, and everybody can watch it walk around naked. It's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop this guy and see what do we have here. Wouldn't you like to know? This is fun, huh? This is like a, a lottery. I like to play, uh, shoot, where's the, where's the, that's not it, Katie Keller? Man, she's good. This gal's awesome. Okay, we'll come back to me in a second, but she's really, really cool. Okay, Ragtime Annie. No, I want the long black veil. Where'd it go? Well, let's listen to the Mockingbird, okay? I have a little lady, 20-year-old lady, Kelly, Katie Keller. She's going to come up here and play this fiddle for you. She's played it on this program many times before. Yes. And had good response from the viewers out there. And she's got Bob Wills from Longview backing her up on the uh, guitar. I don't know if Nola's playing bass or not. But and, sweetheart, we need to dedicate this song to someone else, too. Do we need to dedicate this to a John Yant, a Jack Yant, and Jan. Yes. And their, and their cat named Taz, well, by the way. <laughs> because he'll be glad to see the fiddle lady back. But anyway, oh, Katie oh, won yeah, the yeah. Iowa State Champion with this song when she was 20 years old. And so it's a traditional song, and she's going to do a great job. If you guys see her up on YouTube, let us know you've seen her. We'll pass the comments on to Katie, okay? On. We're on www.youtube.com worldwide on the web. This song will be on in about a week. So I come up here, Katie, and do Listen to the Mockingbird. Y'all hear me? This is Katie Keller. I just met her last night. And I was trying to figure out what the heck to do. And we're waiting for a minute. Uh, shoot, two something. Watch her little eyebrow here. It's really awesome. 
Watch her, watch her grin. It's coming. Here it is. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now there's something real special where she starts doing call, uh, bird calls on the fiddle. And it's even more. It's, it's badass. Katie, if you're out there, give me a call. All the good ones are taken, though, you know. You know she can cook, too. Watch, here it comes. Oh, yeah. Watch, she does some mockingbirds. Now let's hear uh, another cover song by Josh T. Pearson, Hidden Under the Gospel Covers. I thought about maybe broadcasting from the bed underneath the covers, but it got confusing, so I decided to put my clothes on. Anyway, um, what do we want to play for you now? You want a long one? Okay, let's do one without harmonies. We'll do Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a I haven't heard these. Friend makes the four songs many
Okay, let me come back to that. Hey, thanks, y'all. My name is Josh G. Pearson. Um, we're going to play the next one is uh, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. This, uh, again, these were all recorded last night and, and into the morning. These words are 300 years old. That's that's pretty old. Okay, so I didn't get to edit it, so you'll hear it in the middle. I apologize. This is how it would start. So imagine it slowly fades in, and then it slowly fades out. Two songs connected, this one and At the Cross. So last and did my Savior bleed at the cross. With pretty harmonies and all that. Thank y'all. Here, 
keep me from all wrong I'm dissatisfied as long as I walk close to thee. Just stay closer, walk with me. Okay, uh, I'm, ta- I'm talking over myself, which is pretty impressive. I want to say thank you to all the Art Angel people and everything that helped put this together here at South Bank Center. Lots of, lots of gear and forge to allow us to do a live feed. That feedback was my fault. So I'm just going to explain this song. I didn't get to put the extra guitar parts on it, which are pretty cool. Play guitar for 25 years now. Eventually, if you do something long enough, you'll stop sucking. In moments like these 
I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to thee. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I
All right, all right, all right. I went way too long on that. Sorry, y'all. Uh, I didn't really hear these back. We, we we recorded these. I recorded these last night. My buddy helped me, and uh, he mixed the ones without harmonies. So I take the responsibility. Uh, I realized I missed a verse there with harmonies, and it got a little tedious after about the six-minute mark. Normally, I get tedious around the seven-minute mark. My name is Josh T. Pearson. Uh... I'm not this narcissistic that I would just have pictures of myself on the video camera. We just didn't know what else to shoot because normally people are playing up here. Um, I think I'll play you a little clip. How's that sound? we got about five more minutes left of the old-time gospel hour. And, um, huh. i got to scoot over here. We've got all these wires. Give me one second. Y'all be cool. I'll play another clip in the middle. Oh, here it, here it is. No, that's not it. Shoot. Y'all hang out, okay? One second. Two minutes. Country, gospel, music. Huh. Well, this is what happens when you're unprepared. Y'all be cool. You guys watch these Braden Brothers instead. This is really cute. time we got left awesome music country gospel here we go okay we got five minutes left of the um wait 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 they're gonna make some announcements and we keep going so we can keep going so when the south bank people say the show starting in five minutes don't be angry it's my fault for running late okay uh so Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'll tell you what I really want to play. It's really beautiful. Uh, Testimony. Here we go. This is really beautiful. My name is Josh D. Pearson. I don't know who this guy is. I think he used to work with Elvis or something. Uh, it's a really beautiful little testimony. <laughs> Five minutes of your time. Totally worth it. Donnie, it's good to have you back with us. I'd like for you to just give a word of testimony where you've been. During my time in gospel music, I wasn't necessarily what you might refer to as a shining example of Christian living. And uh, I had illusions of grandeur, and I left the Stamps Quartet and thought that I had enough talent and I could be the master of my own destiny. And I got off in another kind of music. And uh, I found myself with my own group, little Billy Blackwood over there. He was our drummer. He's about the only one in the group that didn't jump the fence and run off in the wrong direction. Billy, my hat's off to you, buddy. But my daddy was a preacher. The one thing I didn't ever want to be was a preacher. Didn't ever want to be a preacher, didn't ever want to be old, and wound up being both of them. <laughs> and I got off in the drug culture, and for about six years, I progressed along that endeavor, gave it my very best, and I wound up in 1976, I was a drug addict. I was doing over $200 worth of cocaine every day, taking handfuls of quaaludes, smoking up to a half an ounce of angel dust by myself. And uh, 
had unsuccessfully twice already tried to take my own life in overdoses of cocaine. Because you can make it if you've got a little bit of ability. We live in a good country, and if you determine you can make it. But somewhere some rain's going to come, and the wind's going to blow. And unless what you've built is based with Jesus, it's going to fall. And I wake up on a Saturday morning before Labor Day in 1976. And my whole world had crumbled at my feet. My home had been irretrievably broken. My health was ruined. My money was gone. My friends didn't want to be around me because my mind was all messed up all the time. And to make a long story short, I eventually found myself 28 floors in the air on a little celebrity sunday just outside of Elvis's suite on top of the Las Vegas Hill. And, uh, I was trying to get up a nerf nerve to end the problem I had created for myself. You can't blame your problems on nobody, and you can't go back and redo them. And God saw that a long time ago, and he let his unspeakable gift hang on the hill of Calvary. And he said, if you just back up to it, I won't let you go back and redo the other side of it, but I'll let you start right there and do it all over. And I didn't have nothing but to bring him with a messed up life, but for nine years my father had made a vow with God that if he let him see my salvation before his death, he would eat one meal a day and pray two hours a day for me. And for nine years my daddy ate one meal a day. It wasn't daddy that saved me, but it sure was his love that kept the light of God bright enough on my path so that when push came to shove, I could find my way home. And to make a long story really short, that morning, Saturday morning before Labor Day in 1976 in Las Vegas, Nevada, the spirit of the convicting power of God's Holy Spirit settled out on me and showed me this wasn't no time to end it. This would be an excellent opportunity to start it. Yeah. And the God of my fathers, who I had left a long time ago, saw me coming a long way off and with arms outreached, <laughs> came running toward me. And it didn't matter that I had, it didn't matter that I had abused my abilities. It didn't matter that I had let down all of my friends. It didn't matter that I had dishonored my family name. The only thing that was important was I said, I'm sorry. And he said, it don't matter before the foundations of the world were ever laid. I said, if you knew that, I'd forgive you of it. You did, and I have. And he reached down into a horrible pit that morning and picked me up, dusted me off, cleaned me up, reached over to his war bow of righteousness, got a whole load of his righteousness and placed it around my shoulders, set me down square on the rock of himself, established my comings and my goings, and turned something brand new out loose on the world. I look the same, maybe I act a little bit of the same, but I'm a new creation down in Christ Jesus. Everything that I am, all I'll ever be, what I've got, all I'll ever have. To God be the glory for it all. I love all of you. The devil and nobody else can hang none of that trash around my neck no more. No 
turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me.
Okay, thank you all. Uh, my name is Josh T. Pearson. It's been the Josh T. Pearson Gospel Hour. Uh, I played these songs because I could. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go down with the ship. we got one more smash hit. I'm going to play a little live song. And since we're doing uh, these Gospel Hour songs, I'm going to play my version of Rivers of Babylon which you Europeans know from Boney M. We were not afforded that great pleasure growing up to have those smash hits. We have uh, Willie Nelson, uh, which made it uh, famous, Rivers of Babylon. Anyway, uh, I'll do that now. And just to explain again, if you're walking in on the South Bank Center unannounced, where have you been? You should have been here a lot earlier. You missed something really special. Never hear these songs again. I recorded these songs last night, uh, about, I don't know, 6 to 3 in the morning or something. So, I don't know. So that's where they're sloppy. So I apologize. Had I been more prepared and things, they could have taken off like little songbirds. But I want to say thanks again to Art Angel and all the South Bank people and to the people that are there in uh, at the show. I'll come down and he here in a minute. After we tidy up and uh, say hello, if you if you stick around, you can pull my beard and wish for luck and tell me how great I am. Uh, I'm teasing. Anyway, thanks a lot. God bless y'all. And I'll get up and do this little song. I really was teasing about being great. It's called irony. Y'all know about that here in Britain, I think. Can I say once again, it's really strange to play a show without people there, not being able to feed off the crowd, even though I know I'm not actually playing a show. How am I doing? Is it okay? Okay. So this is Rivers of Babylon. Smash hit. Reconstructed uh, by me. So, uh... If y'all liked any of those YouTube clips, you should send them a little message on the YouTube board. Board, I'm sure they'd really appreciate that. appreciate it. None of this was meant to be. Uh, it was all sincere, sweet people. Uh, so if you're laughing, shame on you. Okay, uh, that's how we look. Okay, let me lower this just a little bit. No more jokes. Again, for those that came, thank y'all. You could have stayed home and watched it from your bed. I would have, end of October, cold and wet and rainy. Actually, I wouldn't have watched. You know, there's one video you should have watched called I'm on a Boat, which I would have played to start off the show, and it's, uh, it's a much better piece, much better work of art than what I just gave you. Um, so, I, we couldn't do it because of legal purposes with swear words and small children. So after this is done, y'all Google, uh, I'm on a boat. Because I'm on a boat. I had it all worked out where I'd be giving this speech in the beginning uh, with the sunlight, and then there'd be a girl in a bikini walk by me, and then we play that video. I'm on a boat. Didn't happen. Nothing ever does. But it's the attempt, right? Anywho. Thank y'all. all the time where you just performance art for about five or six years just uh, doing on un unrecorded and documented things but now because of cell phones and cameras you can't really do that anymore so anyway thank you I'll, be, I'll shut up Ha uh -huh. 
in your eyes Thank you all. I'm going to play one last little clip for you on the YouTube. Y'all have a blessed night. Thanks again. Uh, the goal here was to make a country gospel shoegaze record in the course of an evening. I don't think it's too bad. I didn't get to listen to them before I played them for y'all, so hope it was okay. Anyway, have a great night. God bless you. Cheers. Without further ado, me and Miss Becky Thornton, we're going to do another duet.
This is a song I fell in love with after hearing the Spear family did it. We're back on our 75th anniversary DVD, uh, VHS tape a long time back. And it's entitled, A Good Time Was Had By All. So enjoy every word. Well, a good time was had by all. Yes, a good time was had by all. God's Holy Spirit filled this place. When we offered up our praise, and a good time was had by all. Well, we started out this meeting with the preacher and the deacons on their knees at an altar of prayer. They got up and started clapping before we knew what had happened. A revival broke out everywhere. Jesus started blessing, oh how the Holy Spirit did fall, and I guess it's safe to say, hallelujah, what a day when a good time was had by all. Well, a good time was had by all, yes, a good time was had by all, God's Holy Spirit filled this place when we offered up verse is great. Listen to it. Now churches meet from week to week in every town on every street for an anthem, three points, and a poem. They get through the gospel hour on their own earthly power. They don't pray at prayer meetings anymore. We need a lot more old time preaching and heaven's throne of reaching at the feet of Jesus more altar calls. Oh, Lord, don't let us stray from the old-time gospel way when a good time was had by all. Well, a good time was had by all. Yes, a good time was had by all. God's Holy Spirit filled this place when we offered 